Welcome, people of YouTube. I know it's been a couple weeks since my last video, and I'm sorry about that. I got distracted by some stuff and did not keep my word about making videos week after the last one. So for that, I intend to record three videos today, post all three of them today, for your enjoyment, if there's anyone actually watching this. There should, hopefully there'll be some. But yes, those few of you that may be wondering, this is Dark Souls 2 Skull of the First Sin, and this will be the first series on this channel. And I hope that you all enjoy. And I'm probably going to fail a bit. So, yep. New game. And I'm going to shut up for a little bit. Perhaps you've seen it. Maybe in a dream. A murky, forgotten land. Souls may mend your ailing mind. You will lose everything once branded. The symbol of the curse. An augur of dark. Your past, your future, your very light. None will have meaning and you won't even care. By then, you'll be something other than human. A thing that feeds on souls, a hollow. Long ago, in a walled-off land far to the north, a great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it Drang Lake. Perhaps you're familiar. No, how could you be? But one day, you will stand before its decrepit gate without really knowing why. drawn to a flame. Your wings will burn in anguish. Time after time. For that is your fate. The fate of the cursed.
Well, wasn't that an interesting little opening? I never have understood what was going through the character's mind when he went and jumped down into a whirling vortex in the water. God knows I would never do that in my right mind. Of course, this guy is going hollow, so I guess he doesn't isn't in the right mind. But who am I to say? And I would like to apologize for not keeping my word about recording the videos. But Yeah, so here we are, the things betwixt. The starting point of all characters in Scholar of the First Sin or Dark Souls 2, whichever one you have. Real quickly, I'm gonna come over here. And there's an item hidden over here. Well, not really hidden, you just have to go back here and boom, rusted coin. I never really used rusted coins, but who knows. I might use them this time. Probably not, though. Probably just gonna sell it when I get the chance. And come up here, and we go into this home, and we meet some more creepy old women. <laughs> what seems to be the ruckus? Oh my, your face. The face of the curse. It's an undead. An undead has come to play. <laughs> they all end up here. All the ones like you. You spoke to that kind old dear, didn't you? <laughs> You're finished. You'll go hollow. Yes. You will become one of them. Hollows prey upon them, feast upon their souls. This is the fate of the cursed. <laughs> what is your name? Yep, these women are as creepy as ever. The name I'm going to go with is obviously Kate. Woo, Kate Gaming. <laughs> At least you know your own name. Here's your reward for sharing. It's a human effigy. Take a closer look. Who do you think it's supposed to be? Think back, deep into your past. Yes, it's an effigy of you. And here's where we get to create our character. Now, I typically don't do too much with this. I just will change a few things. Uh, I want your style to go for this time around. Hmm. I'll probably go with the one that I would personally want to be my actual hair. Then. Let's go with a dark blue. And the eyebrows to match. Mm, do we want a tattoo? Might as well. Let's go with... Mm, we'll go with the bird.
I like making the tattoos as dark as possible so that they can be seen pretty well on the character. And that's about all I ever do with my characters in this game. Now for class-wise, um, I'm unsure of what class I want to go with. I think starting off, I'm going to choose the swordsman. Just because I like the weapons and the stats that this class starts with. But I like the ones the knight has too. You know, I'm going to go with the knight just because the knight will allow me to live longer. And then for the gift, I typically choose the healing wares. Just because it gives me extra healing items to use. And there we go. This is Kite, our character for this playthrough of Scholar of the First Sin. Yes. All people come here for the same reason, to break the curse. You're no different, I should think. Hmm, doesn't stand a chance. Well, you never know. <laughs> Go through the door and trot along to the kingdom. But remember, hold on to your souls. They're all that keep you from going hollow. Oh, I'll fool you no longer. You lose your souls, all of them, over and over again. <laughs> yeah, I've never been too fond of these old women. Anyway. Now the actual game has started. Coming up here, we'll find a chest that holds another human effigy. These things are very helpful for when you need to use them. And now I'm going to go back this direction where we came. Because there's a few more items to get back here. But to get one of them, I wanted to have an actual weapon. Down here, we'll find a small, smooth and silky stone. That we can use here a little bit later. And we're going to go across the bridge and through this bush. And this is where I find one of my favorite rings in the game. Especially for the early game. But to get it, I have to kill this guy. Which isn't really that hard. Just stay behind him. He'll always try to sit on you. And then you can just whack at his butt. He stands up, he'll try to sit on you. Whack him in the butt. Try to sit on you. Whack him in the butt. Dodge his attack if he does something else. Try to sit on you. Whack him in the butt. Rinse and repeat. Easiest way of killing this guy is early in the game. You can do this with pretty much all the classes. And you shouldn't have too much difficulty trying to kill him. And he drops the stone ring. Which is very useful. Uh, the stone ring itself allows you to do more damage to enemy poise, which means you have a better chance of stunning them. Which, some enemies it's very useful to stun them. Others, not so much. But it's still a nice ring to have this early on in the game. Now for those of you who may be playing this game for the first time, these tombstones around the things betwixt are your tutorials. They'll tell you how to play the game, if you don't already know. And uh, that there is a bonfire. The bonfires are our checkpoints and save points type, air type things. Though the game does save automatically quite frequently. And then for further tutorials, you just keep going through these paths. I'm going to go down them just to show them off and to get the items that are hidden within them. Well, I say hidden, but they're in plain sight. And the enemies here are really weak, but they still give you some souls. 
And for those of you who don't know what souls are, the number in the bottom right corner are is my soul count. And your souls are both your experience and your currency. Whether you're buying items or leveling up, you'll need souls to do so. And that's what those down there are for. You'll get souls for killing enemies, using certain items, all that kind of stuff. Now this guy has a bow, and he shot me with it. And I cut him down. This area is not hard. Mainly because it's meant to be a tutorial. It's not meant for anything else, really. So we'll come through here, find another bow wielder and another one of these weak guys. Ow. And I just got shot in the face. You know, I don't appreciate arrows to the face. Jerk. Come over here, pick up the life gem, which is one of the healing items. You'll usually start with 10, but if you choose the healing waves, you'll start with 20. And here we have the crows. Now, I, I, I don't know what their actual names are. But you give them the small, smooth, and silky stones, and they'll take it, and they'll give you items for it. Right there, I just got a soul of a lost and dead, like I said, is an item that'll give you souls when used. And this ladder is a shortcut to get back up to them for when you come back with more small, smooth, and silky stones. Or large, or normal-sized smooth and silky stones. Uh, then we'll come through here, and we'll continue to kill all of these guys. And I missed the first hit. Jump attack, and then cut him down. Now this might be where I get my first death of the series. Let's find out. And I do not die here. Will I die my way back? An Amber Herb for new players? Oh sweet, I survived. Is uh, an item that refills your spell uses. We'll see that later on in the playthrough. For those that are curious, I will probably be doing a more dexterity and magic mix build, but I'm unsure which magic I'm going to use. Because for those of you who don't know, there are four kinds of magic in this game, and I'm unsure which one I'm going to use with this character. But, uh, they're all very useful in their own right. You know what? I'll let you all decide. It's gonna be a while before I can start using magic and stuff anyway. So why not let you all decide? Comment down below what magic you'd like to see me use with this character. Now, there is another path, but we can't get past this guy who is currently stoned. He really needs to lay off the drugs. But, uh, we'll have to come back there later. There isn't really anything important over there. But I would like to show that area off, just because it's there. And I'd like to show it. But we'll come right through here, and we'll come out into Majula. This will be your main central hub of the game. Where you level up, uh, where you'll shop. All kinds of stuff. It's a very diverse area. And now you just jump off this cliff. Jumping off these two cliffs, you'll come down and get a Morning Star, a Cleric Sacred... Uh, Cleric Sacred what again? Chime. I forgot. And you also find the binoculars, which... The binoculars are very helpful if you're a magic user. Because using the binoculars, you can free aim magic if you want to use it at a distance. And then we've got the, the bonfire here. And then the last thing we have for this video is talking to the Emerald Herald. Are you, are you the next monarch? Next. Or merely a pawn of fate? Bearer of the curse. I will remain by your side till this frail hope shatters. Take this with you. May it ease your journey. Go on and see the king. He who made Drangleg what it once was. He who peered at the essence of the soul. 
King Vendry. And now the Emerald Herald is who we level up at, and you might have noticed we got an item from her. This is the Estes Flask. It's like the Life Gems, it will heal you. It heals you more than the Life Gems, but you have limited uses, and they replenish whenever you rest at a bonfire. So why don't we finish talking to her so that we can actually level up. Seek misery. For misery will lead you to greater, stronger souls. You will never meet the king with a soul so frail and pallid. Yeah, she's just so full of confidence in Seek you. Seek those whose names are unutterable. The four endowed with immense souls. Their souls will serve as beacons. Once you have found them, return here to me. So that hope will not fade away. Bearer of the curse. Okay. Seek souls. Larger, more powerful souls. Seek the king. That is the only way. Lest this land swallow you whole, as it has so many others. Okay, now we can start leveling up, which we'll probably do that in the next video after we finish exploring and getting all the items from Majula. So I would like to thank you all for coming, and I'll see you in the next video. So long.